I, I guess uh, the first thing I'd like to say before I get started tonight is that this is a little bit of deja vu for me because I used to be on your side in the fall of 1970 looking at Professor Aronson in his Eco 3 class. So this will be my first opportunity maybe to speak to folks on this side, so it's a little bit exciting. Um, what I intend to do tonight is really give you some practical things that you could take home that you can start to use now on your teams and in your groups uh, with Lehigh University, but certainly as you move on into the business world, in your teams, in your departments, and who knows, some of you may end up in top leadership roles, and I think you can use it from this day forward. I, I personally, if I was a student like you, I wouldn't want to be lectured to about how to be a leader, so I'm going to try to make this practical and have some takeaways uh, for you. So. The first thing, I want to just kind of break down what I intend to talk about today. I want to give you a little bit of background about me so you can learn about who I am. And, and you know, if someone's going to talk, you should know a little bit about them. And so in that respect, I think I'd like to give you that information. Then I'd like to talk about leadership, kind of my views of leadership. And if there's anything that's kind of like the lecture part, this is it. It's not long, but I want to kind of frame around what leadership's about. Uh, then I want to get to the good stuff. I want to specifically identify for you leadership behaviors that have been established by Procter & Gamble, where I worked for 10 years, and they're, they're very, very specific, and that's a takeaway for you, and hopefully on your website or something we can get this posted. I've personally uh, carried this with me for about 25 years. And then lastly, you'll drill down to the goal setting portion, that is one behavior with regards to leadership, and that's where James is going to take back over again. So, you know, a little bit in terms of uh, background, yes, I am in the, from the class of 1974, played football, I was an All-American at MBA at Ohio State University. I worked for one company, it doesn't happen anymore, I worked for one company for 30 years. Through that period of time, I had pr uh, progressive promotions to the point that at 40, I was president of the company at 50, the company got bought out, I got retired, bought a place down in Florida uh, and a boat, and over the last 10 years I've been a consultant to industry, uh, I've been on the board of about three companies, and I say I guess a teacher because I've helped out now for the last two and a half years at, at Lehigh, and I always like to say for my wife's sake that I think I've been a good father and husband throughout. All that being said, the thing you want to ask yourself, and I'll ask you, give me a raise of hands. I, I've, because of what I told you, how many of you believe that I'm a success? Thank you. Okay, keep your hands up. Okay, how many of you think that I'm a good manager of people? Do I see fewer hands? Okay, key question. How many of you think that I'm a good leader? Okay, for those of you that have your hands risen, have, raise them up, raise them up. Have any of you worked with me in the past? Do I have any students perhaps that I've worked with on projects? I want to see the hands of those that have worked with me. One? Okay. And what I would say to you is, how would you know if I was a good leader if you hadn't ever worked with me on a project or on a team or something of that sort? Because that's where it's all exhibited. And so the first thing I guess I want to leave with you in terms of some initial message is this. Success does not equal good leadership. Now, success can lead, uh, or uh, leadership can lead to success, but just because somebody's a success has no bearing on whether they're a good leader. And I would also tell you the same thing. Management, good management does not equal good leadership. It may, but very much it doesn't. And so basically what leadership is about, it's about demonstrated <coughs> behaviors that you exhibit in a workplace or on a team and things of that sort. And I think that that's really, I think that's really important to start to understand the difference between success and management and leadership. Um, thinking about my days uh, when I was at Lehigh, I, I thought there was no leadership society, there was no leadership speakers like me, there was no leadership minor, there was no ILR, there was nothing. We didn't talk about leadership, it was all pretty much, you know, uh, calculus and all that good stuff. So, you know, when I joined corporate America, I always had this lingering question for a while that was kind of like, you know, I wonder if I'm a good leader. And, and how would I know if I'm a good leader? And do they like me? And does that count? And things of that sort. How would I improve as a leader? And I tried to do that all pretty much on my own. And so let's take a look at that career path. And I think there's some things of interest here we might want to discuss. I told you I had regular 
um, promotions along the way. I started as a customer service rep on the telephone at a company called JT Baker. <coughs> I went to sales representative, and I put to the right here my direct supervisor, because it might have some bearing. I became a manager in the marketing IS group, Information Systems. I was a corporate director of operations planning and manufacturing. I was a director of administration, a business director of a business, a vice president of marketing, and a president for 10 years. So I say here, up on top, I say observations. Would anybody like to suggest to me what you're seeing here that may be a little bit different than what you might have expected? Where's that first hand? Is there a hand out there? Okay. Well, that's a good thing. But I'm looking for two other things. You have to think about it a little bit. I'll have to give you a hint. Look at, look at each move and look at who my supervisor was in that next move. Gotcha. Actually, quite the opposite. The only time that you'll see over here that I, I was in a role, I reported to the president and I became the president. The interesting thing about my career, and I'm uh, at this point 18 years into my career when I became president of the company, is they never ever took my boss's job. Every job that I got was vertical. And so that's kind of your answer there. They're diagonal moves. And one of the things, I guess this isn't so much about leadership, but it's just a, something of, of interest, is you never know what path you're going to take. You know, I couldn't have imagined that I'd go to so many different roles. I tried to, and one of the reasons is, is I wanted to get as much experience within the company as I could, do different things, and ultimately it turned out well for me. So the lessons learned are, are this. Regardless of what position I was in in the company, I tried to be a good leader, and there's leaders at every level. And I'm not going to suggest to you that because I was a president of a company for 10 years that maybe someday you'll be a president and you'll be a good leader when you are. People can be leaders in teams, people can be leaders in work groups, people can be leaders in small organizations. You might have, a, a, you know, at entry level positions, you might end up with a group of three or four people. You can start some of this stuff that I'll be discussing with you at any level. That's a, one of the, I think, major lessons that I learned. I learned that the multifunctional experience that I got really was very valuable for me in terms of my career development. A lot of people might start in sales, then they go to regional sales, then they go to director of sales, then they go to national sales, then they go to VP of sales. It's very vertical. I kind of went like this the whole way up the ladder. But at the end of the day, I understood an awful lot about finance, about manufacturing, about information systems, about sales, and about marketing. It's just it's something to consider. And so kind of you know, what I say here is learning. Don't be afraid to move to untested or even unpopular waters if it's in your best interest to get the experience. You might consider it to be a rotational assignment. And as I thought about it, one of the reasons why I was able to make these uh, diagonal moves is I sought to do them, but I also had mentors, people above me within the company who would help me to accomplish that. So let's move on a little bit and talk about leadership. Some things that you know, I want to distinguish between are the difference between management and leadership, and it's substantial. I always tell people this, you manage projects, and they get done. You, manage, or you lead people. And uh, leadership is all about people, and it's not about projects and things of that sort. So tonight, you're going to hear a lot of focus uh, about people. Um, about 20 years ago, somebody asked me what leadership was, and I, I invented it, and I've liked it ever since, and so I've kept kind of this with me. They say, well, what do you, well, how would you define leadership? And think about this. I say managing is getting people to do what you want. Leadership is getting people to want what you want. And that's such a huge difference. Okay, because I can, you know, good managers can say, I want you to do this, I want you to do this, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do this, and they can actually get the job done. But the fact is, a good leader, to me, is like the Pied Piper. People want to follow, people want to be part of that group, people want to be part of his team, et cetera, or her team, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when I think more about leadership, I kind of say, what are the reasons why people value leadership? And I, I'll name a few here because I think it's important to put it in that context. To a large degree, I think leadership is about security. It's making people feel a little safer and a little bit secure. In the military, uh, good leaders they feel are going to protect my life. Uh, in business, 
Good leaders will keep my job and my career safe and you know, not off track. Uh, religious leaders, you know, follow a religious leader, get me to heaven, so to speak. I think leadership is about trust, and you have all been aware of the situations where, you know, they say, I want to be on your team, or I want to be on his or her team. Um, I think you've also as well been part of groups maybe sometime that, you know, you say, you hear this, I'll run through a wall for him, or I'll run through a wall for her. That's kind of the, where you want to be in terms of your leadership qualities. Now, leadership, I can also tell you, is very much, in, in my opinion, event and crisis driven. You know, when do good leaders emerge? And I, I wrote some examples here that I think might be good ones. You know, Abraham Lincoln, the Battle of Gettysburg and the Gettysburg Address. It's 150 years later. We're still talking about it. And Dwight David Eisenhower at uh, the D-Day invasion. And, you know, uh, you know, less than a decade later, he was president of the United States. Norman Schwarzkopf in the Iraq War in the early 1990s, and 9-11, Rudy Giuliani, what it did for him. And on the other hand, even though I'm a good Republican, look what happened to George Bush in an event and a crisis-driven occasion with regards to Katrina. I mean, he's still under fire for what they consider to be the inaction that he took. So good leaders step up in crisis. Good leaders step up in crisis. Um, Recognize well as well that leadership is about winning. You know, what I've said here, look, results count. You can't, results count. We're going to get the Super Bowl coming up here. Whatever quarterback wins that game, they're going to go, that's a leader. And the one who didn't win the game, they're going to go, mm -mm, not today. And the same thing's true in business because in business, it's just like sports. It's a competition, people trying to beat their, uh, the next company. And at the end of the day, think about it. You know, people are going to respect the Jack Welshes of the world, and people are going to respect the, the Bill Gates and things of that sort. But those whose companies have failed, no one cares, no one remembers. Another startling statistic to think about with regards to leadership and winning and results counting is uh, just a mere 20 years ago in 1990, you look at the Fortune 500. If you look at the Fortune 500 today, essentially you got about 250 firms that were on the list 20 years ago. And what that says is the game's changing every day of the week. And that's one of the reasons why good, strong leadership at every level is so important in corporations. Uh, I'll emphasize again that leadership is really, really all about people. And when I used to sit and talk with my organization about you know, where we were headed and updates and things of that sort, I always stress to them, and when you think about it, it's true, I said to them, I can replace everything we have in this company. I can replace chairs, I can replace process equipment, I can replace walls and buildings and all that, but I cannot replace you and your talents. And so it's my job to kind of harness that talent at that level, it was my job to harness that talent within the organization to permit us to win. I think that another thing that's important to recognize about leadership is it's a state of being. It's 24 seven, you don't decide you're gonna be a leader one moment and not. And when I get to the specifics here with regards to leadership behaviors, they can and should, in my view, be practiced as part of your personality going forward. Uh, what I did is I tried to get to a bottom line here, so I divided a sentence into three different bullets, but it's really a sentence. But I, I want to stress that leadership is about individual behaviors. It's designed to build organization or team capacity in order to achieve better results. And essentially, that's what it's about. So the question you might ask now is, OK, well, what can I do about it? You mentioned on a few occasions here about these behaviors and things of that sort. What did you ultimately learn? I'll go back in my history. And, and I know that I've always heard, you know, leaders are born, not made. And he or she is a born leader and things of that sort. I mean, you've all heard it. And what happened with me is, uh, my leadership lessons, I think, were on the fly. Uh, I thought that when I was on the football team, I was a leader. I tried hard. But again, I mentioned in terms of school here, there was nothing with regards to leadership, no minor, no ILR, no uh, leadership society like you had. So I just tried my best. And when I got my aha moment, as they call it, was really 11 years into my career at age 33 when I joined Procter & Gamble. Now, Procter & Gamble, I actually didn't join Procter & Gamble. They joined me. They bought our company. And all of a sudden, I ran into a situation where things that I learned in terms of the training that they provided me, which I'm going to provide to you today, I think literally it changed my life and career. And in terms of leaders are born, not made, I think I was made a much better leader by Procter & Gamble. So that's what I plan to share with you today. And this is going to be your takeaway. 
Procter & Gamble believed that there were three overarching themes of leaders. Uh, we call them the threes. I still talk about the threes.